Amen? Nursing babies and raising warriors in the church. And these two is what is happening. Baby are told stories to sleep at night. Warriors are told to stay awakened to watch out at night. These are the reality. Amen? In the night time story, in the night, night time story, we are, okay, in the night time story, we are told about our culture, our city, and our heroes. In the night time stories. We hear about the heroes, the culture, the city. But to be honest, this is what is happening today in a lot of churches. The kingdom of God, how it look like. Oh, wow. Uh, Elijah. Wow. Powerful Elijah. We want people like Elijah. But why not become Elijah ourselves? Why somebody always will go to the heaven and come and tell you about heaven and you say, wow, but you don't want to go yourself? Amen? And this is happening in, I can tell you, more than 90% of the church, this is what is happening. Story that we can enjoy. And when you, you see, when mommy is reading the nighttime story to you, you are hearing, you are hearing, you are hearing, I say, oh, nice. that's nice, tell me again, tell me again. And I say, tell me and you are gone. So you never finish it. You don't know the end of it. Amen? This makes us feel good and very good. Then we sleep. And our parents take care of everything. It's true, there are some attacks. The devil throw. But God will cover us with fire. And you yourself, you don't see the fire. You don't know how much God has protected you because you are a child of God. But God doesn't want you to remain child. Amen? So spiritually, this is what is happening. The same thing. They are telling us about the city, our country, the heroes. Like when you go to the school, they tell you this, Winchester Churchill, uh, the revolution, uh, everything. They tell you everything. You say, wow, you are proud. But what comes out of yourself? Amen? What comes? So we are born babies spiritually. And we are expected to grow into maturity. But this type of message or this type of wake up is rare in the church. I'm telling you, every country at some point experiences troubles. But when those trouble come, these were the soldiers, the strongest one of the country, of the city, comes out to res uh, restore order. Who are the strongest of the church? Where are they? Amen. So there are teaching that we hear that make us behave like children. Feel like children and remain children. Our spiritual gift does not make us mature. The whole church needs to understand this. You can have spiritual gifts. It doesn't make you mature. Let me tell you, I'm a living testimony. We are in 2015. Amen? God told me, now. Okay? He came like this. He told me, now you are mature. You know when? In 2014. After 11 years of ministry, after 19 years of Christianity, he told me, now you are mature. And I will go to explain to you why he called me now mature. So you can understand. Amen? But first of all, I say spiritual gift doesn't make us mature. I'm reading from the Bible. First Corinthians 1, 4 to 7. He said, I always thank my God 
for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you. Now that you belong to Christ Jesus, through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all your knowledge. Eloquent word and all your knowledge. Today when you see how much people can quote the Bible, can make a conversation, put a logic in the Bible, but when you come to demonstration of the Bible, when you see them, you see God. You don't see people. You don't see people. And I can tell you right now, to me, what God has shown me and what I'm expecting, I can't see anybody right now in the whole world that we can, all, all of us can count on it, even on him and say, at least when this one speak, people will listen. Hallelujah. You know what that tells me? I have to do everything for God, God to make me that one. Not for me to pray for that one to appear. Amen? So, eloquence doesn't mean anything. Your knowledge doesn't mean anything. You may know, but you are going nowhere with your knowledge. Amen? So, this confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. I'm, I'm verse 6 now for 1 Corinthians 1. Now, you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said you have every spiritual gift. But look at what he said in chapter 3. Chapter 3 from verse 1. Say, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babies in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you weren't not able to receive it. But these are people who manifest gifts. Amen? Because they are still baby. So, nobody should count of this, his spiritual big gift to say, you know, the gift is an ability of God. It doesn't belong to you. So if God that is manifesting himself, but until your heart is changed and your mind changed and match the mind of God and the heart of God, you are not mature. You are not mature. Amen? So, how do we grow in Christ? We grow in Christ by changing our mind and heart attitude. To change it. You may know about it, but it doesn't mean that you have changed. If it's knowledge, oh, we know a lot of things. Even some people, they are not Christian. They don't go to church, but they know the story about, of the Bible more than you. So the knowledge gives you nothing. It's who you are inside your personality. How your personality matches the personality of Christ. So this maturity or this growth comes through the revelation we receive. Amen? The revelation we receive through our rational and intuitive intelligence. When I'm saying rational and intuitive intelligence, there are two types of revelation. But in church, we are just taught that the revelation can just come spiritually. No, revelation comes with uh, rational intelligence as well. When you are doing observation, what does it? When you are observing, is your rational you used to observe? This thing happened to you today, happened tomorrow, happened this, and you can conclude. So the world is progressing, and or uh, yeah, progressing because they are focused only on the rational. But the church is uh, the teaching that they are telling us: shut the rational and just open the intuitive. And when you open the intuitive, things are happening like that. You are just ready. And you don't react. Amen? Why 
are having declared mature by God. He said, now, Jesus came like this, he said, now you are mature. Why? Because he declared that since the day I discover that actually, regardless of the denomination, every Christian is indeed Christian, is indeed, uh, indeed belong to him. Amen? Uh, let me name some. Jehovah Witnesses. Anybody who believes in Jesus, eh? Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, a Celestial Christian, a Catholic, Orthodox, a Anglican, everybody who calls on Christ belongs to Christ. In Evangelical and Pentecostal, they have, have been taught that if you are not born again, you don't do Rivabako, Shokoto, blah, 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 you are not Christian. No, it's not true. Jesus doesn't take it like that. I will demonstrate it. Amen? First of all, let's go to the Bible before I come back. Mark 9, 38 to 34. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he wasn't with, in our group. He wasn't in our group. What Jesus answered? Don't stop him. Jesus said, No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to to speak evil of me. Just think about it. Can you see any denomination doing anything against Christ knowingly? They, they won't do it. When you don't catch the revelation, you may do your mistake. <laughs> but your motive is Christ you are serving. But now what Christ does, he look at it. Who can save me? You say, my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. So because they have that lack of knowledge, so now Christ is looking for mature one who can love them and go and change the teaching. Look at Paul. Christ went and changed his Paul. So if you don't love the person, you are condemning, you condemn it. Do you, you, do you think you're going to listen to you? They will never listen to you. So everybody belongs to Christ. I'm ready. If they want to kill me for that, they can kill me. But now, there are things Christ has said that if you don't do it that way, there are some advantages or benefits. Uh, certain thing, uh, certain. No, no advantage. How can I say that? Yeah, certain things you can never benefit from it because you have to do it one way in order to have it one way. So if you don't under Christ, understand Christ one way, you can't get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Like, let's say right now, God tells you, pray a certain number of hours. But now, at the end of that, when you are doing that regularly, you will be having something. But now when you stop doing it, you won't have it. So anything God revealed to you, so people, we have many doctrines because of lack of revelation. Okay? Lack of revelation. Everybody belongs to the say that. I have, no. The only thing we need is just a heart to our people. Hallelujah. But now, I know, what I, I need to tell this one here as well, immediately, because I know when you say that, when it comes to marriage, everybody says, ah, if everybody is Christian, so I can marry anyone. Let me tell you, in physical life, we don't take pedophile. We don't take children. You, you'll be called pedophile. Amen? So in Christ as well, if somebody doesn't have some amount of revelation that you have, when you go and say you marry that person in your marriage, because you have misunderstanding all the time. You have misunderstanding all the time. Because you went and took a baby. Okay? When you say eat, say no, give me my bottle. The baby say, I want bottle. You say you want meat. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's clear. Hallelujah. So we need to understand this very, very, very well. So if Christ himself said, no one 
can be doing something in my name and turn against me. And even when we are talking about born again, we can say that from this day, somebody is manifesting the gift of the Spirit. Because that one, when the Spirit is manifesting, it starts manifesting, we can see it physically or we can experience it. But nobody can tell me he knows when somebody has been born again. No. Even me, the date I compare, I, I took right now saying that that day I was born again, I just believe it. Because when I was inviting to, uh, invited to the meeting, even a little boy, I was fasting myself. Nobody told me I would, I would have done 21 days of fasting myself. Nobody asked me because of people. So fasting for other people. So all that time, Christ was with me already. But now according to what doctrine? They say it's because you pray one prayer. How many of us, before you pray a prayer in front of somebody, in your room yourself, you did ask Christ, come take my life, come to me, take my life. We say that several times. So why would the very one we did in front of somebody that we were going to count that, yeah, that's the day you are born again? No, it's not true. Only God knows when we are born. Only God knows. Amen? So, are all the Christians in every denomination saved? I would say no. Because here we need to understand salvation. Amen? Salvation is switching comple- okay, switching from the influence of the demons and the influence of our culture. Then you are taking the, the culture of heaven. Then you are saved. But then when your salvation is completed, that means they cannot, it cannot accom- uh, influence you anymore while you are on earth. That is salvation. Amen? If that is not salvation, let me ask you one question. I believe in Matthew 2, 7, 22. It says, some will say, I cast out demons in your name. I prophesy in your name. That means these are the people who are ministers, isn't it? But at the end, he said, I don't know you. Because you commit what? Iniquity. That iniquity you are committing, that means there is some influences of this world, or of the demons that are influencing you, and your heart never give up to those things. Then you go to hell. So until your heart is stopped being influenced by the philosophy of this world, okay, or the influence of the demon teaching or whatever, then you are not saved yet. You are not saved. It's not coming to just a ribobo that then you are saved. No, 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 no. No. Let's tell the truth to each other. And observe. Hallelujah. So to be saved is giving our life to Christ. I say it again. Giving your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, is that you say, Christ, what is of you? Let me do that. Let me live by your principle. Let me disciple, discipline your life after your standard. This is what we call discipleship. This somebody who discipline his life after, after the standard of Christ is that person we call disciple of Christ. Disciple of Christ. Amen. So today, me personally, I don't just know about the spiritual. I understand and experience it and manifest it. You must understand, you must experience it, and you must manifest it. Let me tell you this. When I look, I don't know everybody very well here, but I know everybody heard about Tokyo in Japan. Hallelujah. We can watch Japan on television. Amen. We can as well watch Japan in newspaper. So nice, good, uh, Dubai, all those things. But you know that if you don't go to Japan, you don't know how people behave. So to tell you that when we are talking about the kingdom of God, just as a cinema, it's not what God is calling us for. It's not what God is calling us for. God is calling us to be 
active in the kingdom. Amen. Active in the kingdom. Then we can influence this world. Amen. My duty is to take anyone who believes in me or who believes that Christ is with me. Amen. Into maturity or into the spiritual world or into the stage where the person can be active in the spirit. Amen. Not anyone who is with me. You get this very well? Not anyone who is with me. Anyone who believes in me. You may be with me, but you don't believe in me. It happened to Jesus. No, no, it's going to happen to. We know Jesus, his mom and brothers were, did not believe in him. That's why even when they couldn't see him, he would always go to those who believe in him. And when they would want to see him, say, ah, your mom and brothers and sisters are waiting for you outside. Say, My mom and sister and brothers are those who listen to the word of God and obey. Not the genetic one. Not the physical one. Amen? So the majority of the church knows about the Christian world, but are still under the influence of the enemy. Amen? Matthew 24, verse 19 to 23. It says, Behold to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. Which day are you talking about? He's talking about the day of judgment of God. And Matthew 25, he's talking about the foolish virgin and the wise one. He said the wise one have taken extra oil, but the foolish one did not. Hallelujah. And when we meet, look at Jesus. When he met the Samaritan woman, the practical word of knowledge, something tangible about her life, bring her, win her to God immediately. But we always, when we meet, we argue about the Bible. Hallelujah. We argue about the Bible. No. The people of the Bible, they didn't argue about anything. They did something tangible. Hallelujah. They did something tangible. So let's go. He said, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, 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 ever shall be. And until those days were, until those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved, but for the elected sake, these days will be shortened. The sake of the elected. So there are some people who are the elected one. They are, even though you are elected one, and the fire is burning in your heart, you want more God. But if you don't have more God, you cannot overcome. Hallelujah. You cannot overcome in those days. Brothers and sisters, look at what is happening in Syria today. They are killing Christians. They are chopping their head. Amen? I won't talk about Chris Edison. Look at uh, Nigeria. Boko Haram is waking up Christianity there. Amen? So, the time is coming when prophecy of being in the office of prophet is not coming out to say, I can see. You can see what? The time is coming, we don't need to see. We need to show. Hallelujah. We need to show. But brothers and sisters, if you don't hear it to this today, and you start getting ready for that, when you are at school, you know that when you grow up, you become mature, yeah? You need to be paying your bills. So you press on to do something so you can have better position in the society. So it's the same. 
Amen? Christianity is spiritual and physical battle. Until you are active in it, you are not even young. Because babies are not active. You are not even young. You have to be active. Until you are winning this battle every day, you are not a warrior. Amen? Let me tell you this. When you are a baby, you are a baby. What God does, as our to my knowledge, what God does is that when you are a baby, he will protect you. He will give you not full protection, but the one you need not to be destroyed. If it's full protection, nobody should be under any attack or any influence, nothing. No. It gives you the one you need not to be destroyed. But now the lack that is in your life, when you are looking at it, and you are a reasonable person, you start standing up. No, Father, no. What is this? You start researching, seeking God, until those ones are changed, are changed, are changed, and you are growing. But if you just want to, oh, my Lord is good, and you provide a... Amen? God will not send you to war until you are ready. Amen? We saw Christians that with the closeness to God, they say, come close to God and God comes to you. you. This happens. They were under serious attack, but nothing happened to them. But we saw Christians as well. Attack comes. The, what do you call it? The final uh, song is all we have sung. The Lord gave, the Lord had taken. Do you think everybody died the day God wanted him to die? No, seriously. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm up for the truth. Do you think the Lord wants everyone to die? People are dying every day. The day they should have. No. Amen? So, if you are a man of faith or a woman of faith, there are certain things, any part of the devil must not be, you must not be comfortable with any part of the devil in your life. Even around you. Amen? To the point that some people, they say travel, they are scared. Hallelujah. If you really know that the Bible that you are holding is yours, everything that is in, I claim the name of Jesus, I claim, why are you scared? So claiming means nothing. Maturity. So we have to build warriors and stop nursing babies. And making people feel good. Making people feel good. That uh, myself, I'm the number one. That did that a lot. Number one, I am. I call it love. But it's not love. It's false love. I don't see Jesus every time coming and say, Oh, Kenneth, I love you. No, I love you. No. He tro- Let me tell you this. Last Sunday, eh? Sunday night in Monday, I have been attacked by four spirits, the same kind. When they come, I chop three immediately. I kill them immediately. One. I battled with that one till this last Friday she left. Last Friday. But I'm a man who attend heaven. I'm a man who see God. But why am I under attack? Even though let me tell you this, eh? Until the devil is interested in you. It doesn't mean that, it means that <laughs> you are not a treat to him. No, seriously, you are not a treat to him. Amen? It doesn't mean you start praying, devil, come, come, come on. It doesn't mean that.
Amen? So, the Bible said, touch not my anointed one. Touch not my anointed one. But we assume that everybody who is in God is anointed. Or everybody who is preaching or who is a pastor is anointed. But why pastors are killed, pastors are jailed, and nothing is happening? Amen? He said it very clear. Psalm 05, 105, verse 15. Do not touch my anointed one, and do not harm my prophet. Amen? So our duty is not a joke. Therefore, our preparation for the battle must be consequent. Hallelujah. Must be consequent. This house must be a house of the egos. Must be a house of the egos. Egos don't like anything dead. Dead. Hallelujah. Most of the time you take dove, dove, dove. Yeah, it's true, yeah. But check and look at the pigeon horse. Look at the pigeon horse. It's dirty. Amen? That's one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when there is sin, this is the place the Holy Spirit goes. If not, why? When you, are, when you sin, immediately you have conviction that you have sinned. It's when you see that he comes to convince you. Okay? But ego doesn't want to live uh, in this sin. So when there is something, that he wants to take it away. Take it away. So as we are sinners, it's true that God can take the form of the Holy Spirit and give it as a dove. Give the Holy Spirit the character of a dove. For the dove to transform us, to convince us, so we can jump up and grow into we become egos. So when you are ego, you can see far. When your enemy is doing something, you know what he's going to do. So you start preparing. Watching out. Watching out. Watching out. Until you move, you get him. But if you want to say, I know. I'm no. Amen? Our first priority must be to seek God and seek him alone with all our hearts. Because God is unlimited. The more you seek God, more God come to you. More close you are with him, to him, God comes. More close you come, more you come. More close you come, more you come. So to the point that, like this morning, I, I gave one subject. I said, let's pray. To the point that anybody who enter, who come to this church, must encounter God. But it's a prayer. Like uh, you say amen right now. But that amen is not enough. To make that prayer happen. That's the reality. There's some attitude we should have to our God that will draw God close to us. Not just saying it and praying. No, 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 no. That's what Christians are doing. You, we are wishing, saying we are praying. You, some attitude. When you are doing this attitude, this attitude, this attitude, then God says, wow, I love this good boy. I love this ch ch child. Let me go. And God is with you every time. God then what he say in the Bible, you, you, can't, you don't even claim it. When somebody is about to touch you, as he said, don't touch, touch not my anointed one. They will know that they have touched one that God has anointed. If not, you will just say it. You just eloquence. And then you say it, you say it, but nothing will happen. They will kill you and they will take change. Amen? So, my friend, stop nursing children and bless warriors. Bless warriors. Start praying. Television, face group, Instagram, all this is interaction with human beings. When you are interacting with human beings, do it to the point that you are communicating God to the person or God, the person is communicating God to you. And let me tell you this to finish. 
How do you know where you are is the right place? Where a man is, is where his heart is. Heart is. Let me give you an example. Suppose that you fall in love with somebody. Immediately that means your heart is now on with that person. You may be in five kilometers, but your heart is there. But now if you fall in love to a job, a person, an activity, whatever, but as you are loving that things, you start feeling that the way you have tasted God. You don't feel God that way anymore. Then you are in darkness. Then God does not compromise what you want to do. So God will tell you immediately, I am not there. Because God does not take you there, so you will not go with you. You are on your own. So anytime you are feeling that, the way you used to pray, the way you used to jump up, because there's some fire when it's bubbling in you, you jump up and you start praying. But if no fire is bubbling in you anymore, because you are doing some activity, and you are saying, oh, yeah, you know, eh, or you know, emergency, God is not where you are. That's why what you used to feel with God before have extinguished. Have extinguished. So if there's anybody here, only this word should give you the deliverance because you know what to do. If you're in love with somebody, you're in love with some activity, you start doing something, and it may, sometimes it could be a job. God doesn't want you in that job. The job will take your time. It, it, you always feel weird. Then you know immediately that that place God doesn't want you are, you are so your heart is somewhere. God is not there. God doesn't want you there. So, let me tell you. You remember when Jesus was on the cross? When the time has come, the pater, father departed. So Jesus knew immediately where I am now. The father is not with me. So, mm -mm, he doesn't want me to be here. He went. He left. So, brothers and sisters, you are called to be, to grow into maturity. Hallelujah. Feeling good will destroy you. Feeling good is destroy you. And that's one of the criteria to choose a partner. Does it make you feel good? Does it make you get close to God? This is how you can know who is God wants you to marry. The person who make you clo get close to God that person is the one God wants for you. But the person who all the time, I don't know. Anyway, me, I teach God. I don't teach anything else. <laughs> Amen? So, brothers and sisters, let's just wake up. We are in a battle. And it's going to get worse. But if you don't wake up, you are not going to your spiritual gym, pushing up, running, amen, and be fit. Then when this, a demon or whosoever wants to see, when you see, you see your body spiritually, say, no, don't go there. But if you don't do it regularly, what happens? And sometimes when the Christ starts to say, let me take three, hours, three days fasting, and seven days fasting, 21 of this, I must have it in the name of Jesus. Mama, oh. Some people, they don't study. When the exam starts, or they finish to pass the, uh, to take the exam, between the, the, fin uh, the date, the end of the exam, and uh, the proclamation of the result, they start fasting now. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, please take the Bible, study it, check the life of those who yourself you call heroes in the Bible. Follow. If somebody is manifesting something, ask him, how do you do it? And you want to manifest something. It's not a, a competition, but you want to manifest it as well. Hallelujah. When you see Jesus himself, he show you one thing. Say, ah, I want it. You know what I tell Jesus? I tell him, you are a human being like me. That's what I tell him. What you experience, I want to experience it. 
There are things today, I will tell you, nobody ever experienced those things in the Bible when I experienced it. Maybe people experienced it before, I don't know. But it's not recorded in the Bible by I experienced it. Even I talked to you about it. Because when he took me, we went to Tunisia, I saw thousands of gifts. He just said, receive one, only one I received. So later I just got the wisdom that actually when he showed me, he wants me to seek it. Because you might be a fool to see something good, you, want it. you don't want it. Amen? So the same thing I'm telling you right now, you record it in your mind and your heart and start seeking it. Because the same, the one Paul said, and you read, and you say you want it. The same thing he told, the way he talked to Paul, this is the way he showed me and tell me. So seek it, and you experience it. You experience it, so we can go to maturity. So the church can count on us. Hallelujah. Or the Lord can say, now I have people. And he can, he can brag about to the devil. Have you seen my servant? Go. Hallelujah. And they come and chop them. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, God bless you.